Hello and welcome back to another video. So you may have seen a recent newspaper article going around the computer gaming forums, mainly Commodore Amiga, uh, a little lad called Richard McFarlane who sadly lost his life at the age of 17. He was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy at the age of 5. Now with this story comes a lot of sadness but a lot of joy as well because 30 years after his death um, his computers that were put up in the loft, his Commodore Amiga and PC I believe, um, were donated to Derby Computer Museum and they sort of restored what was on there. Now what was on there was some of Richard's art that he'd made in deluxe paint and I've had a look at it and it is absolutely phenomenal. So in today's video I'm just going to show you Richard's art and uh, how good it is. Right so here we go. <coughs> Excuse me, here's the article from Derbyshire Live. Uh, there's the heading there, Derby Teens Lost Computer Art Unearthed 30 Years After His Death. So I'm just going to read through it quickly all the, the sort of uh, bullet points of um, the article. So there's Richard there and his sister Tamsin by the Amiga 500. So computer artwork by a Derby teenager thought to have been seen for the last time 30 years ago has been unearthed and restored by the new Derby Computer Museum. Richard McFarlane from Chedderston died at the age of just 17 in 1991 after being diagnosed with muscular dystrophy at the age of five. So he was an avid fan of computers and was also an extremely talented artist. He created numerous paintings on the classic program Deluxe Paint on his Amiga 500. But after he died, the old PC sat gathering dust in the loft. I don't know if they mean the Amiga's a PC or he had a PC, I'm not quite sure there. So it was only that his sister Tamsin saw an appeal this year for donations to the new computer museum on Iron Gate that Richard's family saw a use for the relics. They previously tried to um, offer them to computer shops but told they're of no value. So Tamsin got in touch with the museum and donated all of Richard's collection and miraculously after a convoluted technological process, uh, museum creator Rob Watson managed to retain copies of every piece uh, of his art from the dusty PC. Now that is phenomenal. Uh. So again, I, I don't know if, when you say PC, I don't know if it was a PC and a, an Amiga 500 or they're just calling the Amiga 500 a PC, I, I, I don't know. So um, this week, Tuesday, November 15th, Rob put on a private tour of the museum to Richard's family before it opened to the public on December the 3rd. Uh, within it, he revealed a section of one room dedicated to Richard, including his old computer in full working condition and a plaque telling his story. Now, that is, I would love to go down and see that. That was That is just a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal story, I think. And uh, one I am going to try to get down when it's open. So he also presented them uh, some framed photographs, uh, some of Richard's drawings, and very emotional for the family, which I can uh, imagine. Right, so uh, his sister Tamsin said, we all knew the pictures were on there, but we hadn't seen them for 30 years. It was bizarre seeing it all. Um, it's been lovely, and what the guys have done has been amazing because it's just brought back so many memories, which I can imagine. The amount of care and attention that's been given to this, his little memorials and everything. So there's one of them there. He, I think he liked dinosaurs, it said somewhere. So there's dinosaurs, Rome and a volcano, it rubs some of the richest computer design dialects. So all these are all done by hand. There you can see his family there and the museum volunteers with some of his framed artwork as well. Um, so I'll just let you read that. I won't read everything because it's, you know, you can read it in the article. So um, let's go into the gallery and see uh, Richard's drawings. <clears throat> Righty ho, so uh, this one here, something to do with space, I think. And another one. Yeah, another space is like uh, some sort of um oh so he's uh, he was obsessed with space and dinosaurs i knew it was dinosaurs and something else uh, another spaceship there just, just phenomenal artwork i i can just about do my name on the looks paint never mind draw something like this so many of his artworks looked to the future such as this one focusing on a huge spaceship <clears throat> right so here's the gulf um yeah 
using deluxe paint to create these kinds of pictures was not an easy task, which I can imagine. Again, some more dinosaurs there, uh, an erupting volcano in the background, a little waterfall here. So this is picture four of 23. Yeah, so we've created some tapestry style pieces as well. I don't know how he's done that, I really don't. Space exploration was a reoccurring theme in Richard's Doodles. Again, another fantastic picture. Another cracker there, jets, fighter jets or planes. I like that one. Cars and planes also frequently appeared in Richard's drawings. Reminds me of the start of Test Drive 2 with that car, the Ferrari that goes across. Again, there's another plane. The plane seems to be taking off with a cloud in the background. Very nice indeed. Another tapestry style one or hypnotic pattern one, whatever they called it. Also discovered on the thing, yeah, the old computer. Uh, another space one here. There were elements of Star Trek and Star Wars in the artworks. So, yeah, that is very, very nice. The family were emotional and taken back when they saw the memorial that had been created for Richard. Hmm. This ship features a realistic looking sail being buffeted by the wind. Very nice indeed, very nice indeed. Yeah, it says here the artworks would have been taken many hours to complete, I can I can imagine. I like that one as well. There is something particular in the horn. Sorry, there's something peculiar and haunting about this picture um, of a monolith. Again, another one. That's wow. Yeah, so when he wasn't doing dinosaurs or space ones, he was creating these uh, sort of yeah, hypnotic, strange patterns. That one's a cracker. Pieces such as this would perhaps fit into what internet followers call a uh, lim 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 can't even speak liminal artwork. Teenagers' artwork was futuristic in some cases. Uh, yeah, space. So that was the one we seen at the start. That's the space ex exploration one. Wow, look at that one. Crack of that one. He's even got the uh, is that no step mean don't stand on that? I don't know. So it says here this soldier has elements of the video game character Duke Nukem, but that game did not come out until the year after Richard's death. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that is the artwork for is it Operation Wolf or maybe Operation Thunderbolt? I don't know, but if he's drew that, that is absolutely phenomenal. That's just wow. What's this one here? Um, rocket launcher attached to the roof of a car. It looks like he probably hasn't finished that one. This particular spaceship doesn't look very friendly. And while a planet on the left does not appear to resemble Earth, it does seem to have a moon. Maybe that's the way he's done the Earth, I don't know. Oh, that's good, I like that. Got a bit of a leisure suit lally three feel to it. Seaside picture. Wow. Is that it? Oh, that's yeah, 23 of 23. So yeah, that was a little look um, at Rich's artwork, unearthed after 30 years after his death. <laughs>